Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about the private fields feature coming out in TypeScript 3.8. There are a number of other new features in TypeScript 3.8 as well, both related to TypeScript and to ECMAScript generally, but we're going to focus on the private fields. This feature introduces a new syntax with this uh, hash symbol or pound symbol or octothorpe, whatever you want to call it, that makes a field private to the class that defines it. And this is enforced at runtime. This contrasts with the private field feature already in TypeScript today that does not get enforced at runtime. And this particular feature is a proposal to ECMAScript itself. It's at stage three. Stage four is where something becomes a part of the standard, and this is not at that level yet. This proposal also includes public instance fields, by the way. So here's an example from the description of the proposal uh, for ECMAScript. They give an example of a custom HTML element called counter. Whenever you click it, the counter goes up, and when you render the element, it sets the text content of the element to whatever the counter value is. And note that this public field version looks a lot like how you might see in TypeScript today as well. Here's the private field version of it. Uh, in this case, you put that hash symbol in front of things, and now this makes it so this field is no longer accessible outside of the class. This feature is actually a very controversial feature, it turns out. Some people just don't like the proposal at all. Other people would like to change the syntax of it. There already is a future reserved word in ECMAScript today called private, uh, which is not usable as a variable name when you're in strict mode. However, current intentions within the TC39 committee that defines ECMAScript are not to use a private keyword for the private field feature. The proposal for the use of the hash symbol has been around since July 2017, and they discussed a number of alternatives, including the use of a private keyword, and the consensus is to move forward with the hash symbol for defining private fields. Whatever you think of it, let's look at some code. And let's see how far we can get down the rabbit hole. We have a class counter here that simulates the previous example we saw before. You click it, the count goes up, but we just render to the console instead. Here I've created a new counter, I've clicked it twice, and I render it. So what happens if I run this program? I get two out. Okay, that's expected. Before we move on to private fields, let's look at some other things. First of all, we do expect to have access outside the class because by default, everything's going to be public in JavaScript. So we get it printed out again, which is two again. Okay, cool. Alternatively, instead of using the dot syntax, we can use the square brackets and treat it as a hash table syntax with a string key of count. And we see two as well. Okay, just remind us how we expect things to work normally in JavaScript today. And note that the public and private field feature has already been implemented in V8, which means it's available in Node as well as in Chrome. So let me go and put in private fields here. Notice we haven't touched TypeScript yet. It behaves the same as before. But what happens if I want to access it from outside the class? And we see here that we can't. It's actually a syntax error to access hash count. It has to be de uh, declared inside an enclosing class. This is a static check within the new uh, feature that's being proposed for ECMAScript. I also happen to misspell my variable, like say I called it county instead of count. Same thing happens here. Private field hash county must be declared inside an enclosing class. So we see here that it is being enforced statically. And let's see what happens in terms of dynamic enforcement. So what we're going to look at so far is this notion here. What happens if instead of doing dot hash count, I just cheat and go sneaky and try to access it through a string? It's undefined. The point here being that you cannot access this private field through other mechanisms. Let's go on to TypeScript. We're back to our original example that just has a public field called count. And like I said, the public fields of the new ECMAScript proposal look pretty much how they look in TypeScript today. So let's go ahead and run this. So we say npx tsc. Okay, here we are. I'm going to compile it to ECMAScript 2015 and then run it. And I get the value two out. Sweet. Okay, and prove again we can access this from outside as well. Awesome. Now, what if I use the private keyword that's already in TypeScript? This right here is going to be erased at runtime but checked at compile time. So for example, come over here. Now no longer can we access it from outside the class. We'd have to hide this. And But since it's erased at runtime, you know, I can just cast it away and get access to it if I want. Oh, oh sneaky me, I got it. Here's a compiled out JavaScript that we see here and it just says dot .count. All that idea of private was entirely erased. Okay, so what happens instead if we use the new feature. 
and we'll find that the behavior, the exact words aren't the same, but the behavior is the same as what we saw in the V8 implementation a second ago. Cool. If I try to access it from outside the class, I'm going to get a static error. And if we're to try to access it through this other syntax as well, we're also going to see the same behavior as before. Now this is implemented in uh, the compiled JavaScript as using a weak map, where we have this now global variable underscore count, and then we access the value for our this, where the this becomes the key. And there's runtime checks that are happening here as well. So instead of using a standard field, we're actually using a separate uh, weak map for any field we define. Now, one of the interesting things about this is how does that affect uh, performance in terms of how fast your code is going to run? And it's hard to test this very accurately, really. You never know for sure what's happening when you're testing these things, uh, unless you go and look at the actual output machine code, which I haven't done here. But in Firefox, when I'm using weak map versus map versus access to a uh, field directly, and this is somebody else's JS perf that they defined earlier, uh, we find that we are substantially faster to access a field directly which who knows how much is actually being optimized away. But in any case, it's still substantially faster than if we use either a map or a weak map to get at a value. And we can also look at the same thing in Chrome where we see different behavior. First of all, accessing the field value directly is not quite as fast as Firefox for whatever reason. Who knows what they're making disappear or not. Uh, and interestingly, accessing a map is just as fast as accessing a field in Chrome. But a weak map is still going to be substantially slower, though much faster than what we saw in Firefox. Uh, your mileage may vary. Anyway, uh, there still is the issue that inherently we like to imagine these private fields are super easy to optimize in ECMAScript. But because of the constraints of how it needs to be implemented for the right semantics in TypeScript today, you're not going to get the performance necessarily that you want in terms of your implementation. So you have to say, do I really want this runtime privacy or not versus how fast my code's going to run? It will depend on your use case. Meanwhile, moving on, there actually already is a way to do private fields that are very efficient inside of JavaScript without either of these features. And this is runtime enforced, and that's through the use of closures. Instead of having a field at all, I just create a new class inside of a separate function, and I have a local variable that I access uh, inside of my closure that I then return. So I can say node closure.js, I get two as before, and really when it comes down to it, there's not a way for me to get access to that local variable. I can't see it at all. So it is truly private. Um, now the one of the downsides though is that every time I call this function, I'll get a new class defined, not just a new instance defined, which means if I create a new instance and I see if they have the same constructor, the answer is that they don't. However, if we were gonna go back to our private field over here instead, we could try the same thing and say, is my old instance constructor equal to my new instance constructor? And the answer this time is going to be, yes, it is. So that's one example of a difference that why you might not want to use closures in order to simulate privacy. Okay, so the other question is, why do we care about this in general? And one of the things that becomes interesting here to look at base classes and subclasses and this could apply to any kind of thing where you're trying to like write a library and someone's trying to use your class and you want to use a new variable in order to store some extra information, but they might be depending on the fact that you hadn't named that variable before. And it's one of the problems you don't have real encapsulation and privacy in your uh, implementations. So let's go and run this version over here. The same thing as I had before, only now we've extended a base counter and we've defined a variable, we've defined a field in both of these classes. And I get two out here because I created a counter, clicked it twice. Okay, what happens if I go and reset this and then render again? Notice reset is defined in the base class and it may have been thinking it was referencing its own variable that someone else didn't realize they were stomping over the top of, perhaps. I've now reset the single value count to negative one here. But what happens if I had used a private field? Aha, when I reset it, I reset the base class field and not the subclass field. And I could actually go ahead and make the subclass one private as well. And for kicks, let's see what happens if we try to access somebody else's in a sneaky way. <laughs> 
First of all, it should be nice and create a new instance of the same class. This is the base class again. I'll click the other one one time. So I have two clicks on one, one click on the other, and the sum should be three. I see two for the first render, three for the second one. That's what I expect to see. So I could access the private field of another instance of the same class. What happens if I want to access it for another instance of a different class? And the answer is I cannot do it. That's a runtime check that's prevented from happening. The same uh, checks are happening because of the implementation with weak map in the TypeScript, such that you also have the same behavior in TypeScript and it implements the semantics as expected for the proposal for ECMAScript. We're not going to look at it, but you get a new global weak map for every time you define a new uh, private field. Before we move on, let's also look at this behavior inside of uh, debugger. One of the cool things about JavaScript is that you have access to great developer tools inside of your runtime environment. Uh, and if I have a breakpoint on uh, an instance with a private field, I can see that in my Chrome debugger. However, interestingly, if I want to make a watch expression from outside, I cannot see that value. And one of the reasons why that's possibly the case beyond just the issue it's supposed to be private is what happens if I had this base class example again. So I have my breakpoint here and I'm paused and I can see both values, although it's sort of unclear what's what inside of my direct access to my variables. Uh, but if I wanted to say counter dot hash count, which one would I be referring to? You know, technically debugger should be allowed to cheat and it does some, but it becomes unclear what the behavior ought to be. And at least Chrome today just says, I'm not gonna show that to you. Meanwhile, going back to this issue of controversy of what kind of syntax should I use to have private fields? Should I use a keyword, et cetera, whatever? Uh, presumably the reason why they added a new uh, sigil, a new uh, symbol in front of the variable name is so that it automatically conflicts with any use today because it would have been illegal. And if I look at all the different uh, non-alphanumeric symbols on my keyboard, uh, my American English keyboard, uh, not a lot of options are really available here. Uh, a lot of these things are already operators. A lot of these things can already be, some of these things are already used in variable names, such as dollar sign. Some things like the at are already in other proposals for ECMAScript extensions. This would be for decorators. And so there's not a lot of options available. However, we can look at another example of a different language that does use sigils for private variables, and that's Ruby. And they use at there, which makes you think of the word attribute. Any case, so I have replicated this example in Ruby uh, using their syntax instead. So I say Ruby attribute.rb. I've clicked it twice. The bang here indicates I'm changing the state of my object, and I get the value two out when I render it. Sweet. Okay. So the question is, can I access this from outside the class? And the answer is no, I may not. If I provide an accessor to define accessor methods, now I can access it from outside the class, but not in terms of the direct access to the field, but instead through the accessor method. So I've rendered it here and then I printed it again later. Now there's two other interesting things about how Ruby does stuff versus the proposal for ECMAScript in my opinion. Uh, one of the things to look at is can I access a private field of another instance of the same class? We saw that was allowed in JavaScript for the proposal, but we cannot do it in Ruby. You can only access uh, your instance variables for the actual receiver of this method call. And the other thing I want to point out here is that I don't say self dot in front of all of my references. I just say at whatever because syntactically it's required to be a reference to the current instance. Could we do this the same way perhaps in ECMAScript? Could we just get rid of the this dots? You know, what would hash variable name by itself mean anyway? That would be already illegal. So one possible extension I'd personally like to see would be don't require this dot if you just want to access this dot for a private field. And then the perhaps ugly syntax might actually become simpler and prettier syntax instead. So whatever I think about it, does the hashtag private syntax reach stage four in ECMAScript? Do they separate public and private fields in the proposals? Uh, will there be uptake of the TypeScript feature? Does the performance of weak map have an impact on that? Well, I'll find out. Bye, y'all.